an analysis of the opportunities uh, for developments in search receiving the above mentioned within the above mentioned uh, framework presentation of uh, the most initiative and of the most corridors while finally we conclude our presentation with uh, some relevant conclusions so to begin with uh, definition once again, logistics is defined uh, as the process of uh, planning, implementing and controlling the efficient, cost-effective flow and storage of raw materials, in-process inventory, finished goods and related information, from the point of origin to the point of consumption, from, for the purpose of conforming customer requirements. Counterization is defined the containerization as the transport system based on the large cargo carrying containers, ranging up to 48 feet long, that can be, be easily interchanged between modes of transport without needing rehandling their contents. Seaports, are, uh, respectively, are points of uh, convergence between two geographical domains of trade, circulation, the land and maritime domains. While the maritime domain can involve substantial geographical coverage related to global trade, the land, dom the land dom domain is related to the ports region and uh, local and locality. The term port comes from the Latin portus, which means gate or getaway. Transshipment is the act of uh, offloading a container from a ship, from one ship and loading onto another ship. Transportation is the function of planning, scheduling and controlling activities related to mode, transport and movement of goods and people. Intermodality is a characteristic of a transport system whereby at least two different modes are used in an integrated approach in order to complete the door-to-door -door transport sequence. Well, finally, physical distribution is related to the activities associated with the movement of material, usually finished goods or service parts before, from the manufacturer to the consumer. Moving forward to the evolutions uh, in, the port, uh, in the port and transport industry, Ports and uh, transport are impacted uh, by, in general, impacted by changes in the global environment. Among these forces of change, we distinguish uh, the globalization of uh, markets through the, the implemented economic reforms, which have allowed trade liberalization and the development of global production systems, which leads in turn to increasing sourcing alternatives. The development of international trade, which is also a driver for increased uh, demand for transport services, because as the first increases, the latter also increases uh, proportionally, proportionally. The increasing utilization of transported goods since uh, the conception of containers in the mid-50s, more and more cargo are transported within containers. To such an extent today that we today we actually say that container trade has become a commodity trade. Well, finally, the ever-changing environment of technological innovation in uh, information technologies and logistics, which uh, allows uh, scale and cost advantages uh, as well as access to more markets and thus to more customers and vendors. This graph illustrates uh, the steady increase uh, international uh, the increase in international uh, trade, and uh, that is coupled with an increase in seaboard trade diachronically. In the other, in other words, transport is the means for circulation of commodities in space, and uh, for this reason, international trade determines the demand the demand for transport services. Also. Uh, in this, uh, in, the, in this graph is presented the diachronic evolution of the world traffic, the world uh, throughput, the volumes of full, full and empty containers and uh, uh, transported and the evolution of container transshipment. Once again, we observe a steady increase in the use of containers since uh, the 80s and until 2008, when the financial crisis occurred and led to the sharp decrease in container volumes. As we can see, not only uh, the world traffic was in party, but logically also full and empty containers as well as uh, uh, transshipment uh, had uh, a slope, uh, had a decrease. 
that, despite the economic, uh, the recent economic crisis, which affected temporarily uh, the container, uh, transported container volumes, maritime transport chain is still uh, the most important, uh, the most important in uh, this world of globalization. Many connections are possible via the sea because uh, via sea transport, since uh, competition from uh, other modes of transport, such as uh, road and rail and road and air transport, are limited due to capacity and cost uh, constraints made mostly. Together with the spread of containerization and thus liner shipping is the primary means of uh, transportation, uh, it triggered changes in seaports with the emergence of specialized container terminals, as well as in other modes of transport such as rail, road, short shipping, and inland waterways. In such a way, liner shipping has become the hegemon of every deep sea transport by generating demand for tra other transport services. Also, the route and port, port entry into a continent are important decisions influenced by what companies want and are expressed in the supply chain strategy of the company. Before the conception of containers, port operations used to be labor-intensive, cumbersome, and time-consuming procedures. These are some typical uh, photographs from uh, uh, the port of Rotterdam in the, the period of 60s. Uh, the characteristics of uh, this type of port operations, the main characteristic of uh, this type of operations, is that they were considerably inefficient. This, of course, this, uh, the previous pictures, uh, of course, have nothing to do with uh, contemporary terminal operations, for which efficiency is the primary goal. Port operations nowadays, apart from the fact that uh, they are mostly performed by uh, specialized multinational terminal operators, they are capital intensive procedures with huge requirements in infrastructure and superstructure, and an increased degree of automated processes due to the advances in IT and logistics. These processes make uh, the, the port terminals more efficient and more able to adapt to the increasing uh, transported volumes via uh, sea transport. So, when comparing conventional and contemporary terminals, we observe the following differences. The characteristics of conventional terminal are where small terminal were characterized conventional terminals were characterized by small terminal surface, direct transshipment possible, limited mechanization and automation, as well as improvision, improvisation in terminal operations. Nowadays, contemporary terminals, on the other hand, require large a large terminal interface, indirect transshipment, model separation in time and space advanced mechanization and automation in uh, different procedures, uh, organization and planning of the uh, whole door-to-door -door transport. The changes in the port operations in the, uh, the container terminals signal also the changing role and the functions of port terminals. Terminal characteristics uh, have also changed uh, because in, uh, in aspects of uh, stacking capacity, standard container term ports used to have uh, 1,000 to 1,100 uh, TUs per hectare, while the emerging paradigm uh, talks about terminals, discusses terminals of 2,000 to 4,000 4, TUs per hectare. Ship to shore grant crane productivity uh, has been increased from 30 movements to movements per hour to 50 movements per, per hour. Dwell time on container yard has been uh, minimized from six days in standard container ports to three days in uh, contemporary terminals. Tranking tenor now time uh, has been minimized from 60 minutes to 30 minutes in container term, contemporary container terminals, while also rail access which used to exist if it existed in uh, in port areas uh, in emerging uh, container terminals they are right on the dock while the berthing depth in uh, standard container ports used to be 12 to 15 meters while in uh, contemporary ports 
it's uh, more than uh, 15 meters uh, in order to serve uh, the increasing uh, size, the increasing containing ships that operate in uh, the main trade routes. In such a way, uh, we are moving towards the concept of terminalization, which is actually the growing influence of transport terminals in setting and uh, operating setting and operating of supply chains in terms of location, capacity, and reliability. This means that we gradually move from a bottleneck-derived approach, which uh, considers the terminal as constraint. Uh, was based on a rational use of facilities to maintain operational conditions. The challenge was to store that space. The uh, challenge uh, that was store that space, ports of Gulf Principacy and gate access, while the, the, the outcome uh, was concerned with the volumes, the frequency and the schedule changes. We moved then to a new perspective towards a more warehousing derived approach since terminals have become an intermediate mode in door-to-door -door transport chains. In uh, the warehousing derived approach, terminal is used as a buffer. Uh, it incorporates terminal as a storage unit, while the challenge is inventory in transit with the inventory and terminal, and the outcome is to reduce warehousing requirements at distribution centers. As we can observe in this picture, the transport, follow, the transport flow in contemporary terminals is a rather complex procedure that involves several steps, several steps. from unloading, uh, unloading from the ship, movement uh, uh, by automatic vehicles uh, to the yard, buffering, and from the yard once again transported to the seaside for transshipment or to the hinterland side to be loaded to other modes of transport. To perform uh, the above mentioned steps, terminals should have specific characteristics. We distinguish them um, according to the classification of core and auxiliary characteristics. Among the core characteristics, they include the infrastructure, in other words, the modal access, docks, siding, roads, and loading areas, equipment, intermodal lifting equipment and storage equipment, storage capacity, gap ready and loaded containers, and management, which is the administration maintainers access to the port and information systems, while uh, among the ancillary services, we include trade facilitation through trade, zone, free trade zones and logistical services, distribution centers, which offer yes. Sorry, we have a small technical issue. Okay, so I, I repeat the final, uh, the final slide. To perform the above mentioned uh, steps in terminals, uh, terminals should have certain specific characteristics. We distinguish uh, them according to a classification of uh, core and, and ancillary characteristics. Among the core ones, we include infrastructure or else the modal access uh, through docks, siding and roads and unloading areas, equipment in uh, the modal lifting equipment and storage equipment, storage yards, yards for rent and loaded containers, as well as management 
which includes administration, maintenance, access to the gates and to the port and the information systems. Among the ancillary services characteristics, uh, these include trade facilitations, trade facilitation through free trade zones, logistical services, distribution centers, which provide services such as transloading, cross-docking, warehousing, temperature control chains, storage depots of, uh, uh, for containers and bulk storage, as well as other uh, uh, container services such as washing, preparation and repairs. Uh, <clears throat> the ports as a whole, in order to provide services as a business pattern of choice uh, to the transport uh, stakeholders, must fulfill four key functions. First of all, the regulatory function, which ensures that such statutory requirements are fulfilled. The landlord function, which focuses on managing and planning the real estate, implementing policies and strategies for the development of infrastructure providing access for road and rail-based transportation. The operation, the, the operator function, in, which is actually the, the operators engaged in the fiscal transfer of goods between sea and land. And finally, the stakeholder function, which is the community or the cluster management. In the next two slides, we depict and classify ports and their respective authorities according to the, according to the approach, uh, the latter half towards the fulfillment of the four basic functions. The hypothetical topology consists of three basic types of ports. In the first uh, section, we have the, cons uh, the conservator. We have three types of ports, the conservator, the facilitator, and the, and, uh, the entrepreneur. The conservator concentrates on being a good housekeeper and essentially to a passive mechanistic implementation of uh, the three traditional functions on a local level. Uh, a facilitator port profiles itself as a mediator and the matchmaker between economic and societal interests. Hence, the well-developed community manager function. Facilitator ports uh, also look beyond the port perimeter and try to engage in a strategic regional partnership. While finally, the entrepreneur port combines, combines main features of the facilitator, facilitator with a more outspoken commercial attitude as an investor, service provider, and consultant on all three geographical levels local, regional, and global. As we see in the table, uh, with regard to the landlord faction, the conservator board uh, adopts a passive real estate uh, management approach, continuity and maintenance, development mainly left to, to others, and financial revenues from a real estate on tariff basis. While on a facilitator uh, board, uh, the environment changes and the Port Authority acts is active a real estate broker, while in the entrepreneur model, uh, the Port Authority is an active real estate developer. On the regulator function, once again, the conservator implements the passive, uh, adopts a passive application and enforcement of rules and regulations, mainly set by other agencies, while in the facilitator ports, active uh, port authorities engage in active application and enforcement of rules and regulations through cooperation and with local, regional, and national uh, regulatory agencies, setting on rules and regulations. While again in uh, the entrepreneur uh, uh, port authority, again uh, the port authorities adopt uh, the profile of uh, facilitators. Uh, selling expertise and tools uh, outside the port on a global scale. With regard to the operator function, uh, the conservator uh, port authorities adopt a mechanistic application of uh, concession policy uh, with uh, overwatching uh, issues with uh, regards to licensing and issuing windows. Uh, on, uh, the mediator uh, port authorities uh, we observe a dynamic use of concession policy in combination with real estate uh, broker uh, role, 
uh, and finally in uh, the entrepreneur court authorities we have a uh, dynamic use of concession policy in combination with real estate development role uh, the court authority may be actually shareholder in private court service providers to provide services of uh, general economic interest, interest as well as commercial services provide services in other ports like a global operator and finally uh, in the community manager function in the <clears throat> conservator port it has not uh, it has not been actively developed while in uh, the mediator port authority it has two dimensions economic dimensions uh, where the port authority is involved in solving hinterland bottlenecks providing training and education provide ict service save uh, services promotion of uh, of the port services and lobbying while the second dimension is the societal uh, which concerns accommodation of conflict in interest, lobbying and promotion of positive externalities within the port area and the port perimeter. Finally, the entrepreneur port authority is uh, similar to the facilitator type in this respect, but the economic dimension uh, is with more direct commercial involvement. And as we see, that was we moved uh, to the entrepreneur, entrepreneur port authority uh, increases the reach and scale uh, of the port from local to local and regional to local, regional and global. Depending on the previous typology, ports and their respective authorities utilize certain start strategies to, co to coordinate container flows across the transport chain. Amongst which uh, the usage of incentives to coordinate operations of freight actors, the optimal usage of uh, transport chains, the engagement in interfering alliances through vertical integration along the transport chains, horizontal integration between competitors, alliance between a maritime shipping company and a terminal operation, equipment and container pools with other. Uh, companies on a horizontal level. An expansion of the organizational uh, scope of uh, the port authority through vertical integration, where an actor decides, decides to penetrate uh, the new market, a maritime shipping company involved in port terminal operations, a port authority developing an inland, an inland port, while finally through collective actions where public and private partnerships are used to create the logistic parts where each actor contributes within its realm of expertise, development of multiplying effects. Plus, considering ports in supply chain theory, they are consistent with the spread of the new paradigm by which real competition is not uh, company against company, but rather supply chain against, rather against supply chain. It has been stated that competition is not unfolding between individual ports, but between logistic chains. According to the supply chain management perspective, ports have been considered as part of the chains of companies involved through upstream and downstream linkages in the process and activities that create value to the final customer client. In this picture, we can see how ports act as a part of a multimodal chain and uh, the several other stages that need to be combined in a coordinated approach in order to reach uh, the final customers. We see that contemporary ports have uh, options for various multimodal uh, uh, services, either through uh, freight trains or inland uh, barges. And we see that in such a way we move towards a hub and spoke system, more concentrating uh, traffic flows in a certain port and then with various means of transport, either uh, transported to smaller ports and then uh, from there on with uh, uh, hinterland connections until they reach uh, their final destination. Ports within the global supply chain uh, play an important role in global logistics by acting as a node for a network of parties engaged in shipping and receiving goods. 
Courts also facilitate material transfers and associated information flow and thereby contribute towards efficient and effective local transport chains. Courts serve as logistics platforms and coordinate the requirements placed by several stakeholders, such as shippers, terminal operators, forwarding companies. And finally, ports transformed into model transport facilities integrated, integrated to sea and hinterland modes. Linless uh, and agility in ports. Agility and linless are two elements that allow ports to streamline operations, achieve coordination, in order to make the best use of available resources. A lean port is one that, as a business unit, makes the best use of its available resources, either tangible or intangible assets, and by eliminating all sorts of waste in the physical and documentary process or information, or information processes related to cargo and modes delivers perfect customer service. An agile port is the one that requires new management philosophy within the port authority, embracing also those pertaining to the network. Uh, one that can be adaptable, responsive and, fle and flexible uh, in the center of knowledge. One that gets involved in partnerships and strategic alliances within land depots and with other transport stakeholders. The one with full, which fulfills the requirements on infrastructure, infrastructure, and superstructure accessibility. One which continuously tries to innovate, and finally, the one which performs research and evaluation performance, and in other words, anticipate the anticipated events. An important issue to to mention is that. Uh, ports are impacted by several aspects, such as uh, the, the ever larger containers, container ships that are utilized in uh, the basic the main trade routes. Uh, we can consider the, the, large, the enlargement of container ships to such an extent that uh, in 2015, some ships will have a capacity of 18,000 AU. This is uh, the equivalent of a uh, continuous length of heavy goods and vehicles from Paris to Rotterdam. Imagine, uh, how, this, uh, uh, imagine how difficult it is to control uh, the transport flows in order not to create bottlenecks and uh, uh, negative externalities both to the society and to the uh, system. Again, the, the enlargement of uh, container vessels led to the adoption of uh, of the hub and spoke system, uh, which we analyzed in the previous session, so uh, uh, I won't get into details about these aspects since uh, we're analyzing the previous section. But there are important factors that uh, transport ports into logistics hubs, and we should always have that uh, back in our minds. Uh, an important aspect, however, is to show. Uh, the extent of the impact of these changes exerted on transport trains and in, in ports. Ports have been uh, largely transformed in transmit transshipment hubs if we consider that only 17% of the containers transported reaches it, uh, its destination directly, while the remaining 83% of the transporting containers are transshipped from one to three times respectively. And this is the reason why we observe the development of global uh, transshipment hubs such as Singapore and satellites with connections uh, to smaller satellite ports. Then uh, we'll move forward towards uh, in the next session, which is uh, uh, discusses uh, uh, how we can move towards a more sustainable and uh, intermodal uh, transport system. Changes and evolutions in the transport chain I described above, uh, largest vessels and the concentration of loans to certain handboards, uh, put additional pressure to, to these ports and the relevant transport stakeholders, as they both need to coordinate and communicate more efficiently in order to manage the increase in, uh, the, increase in the flow of goods. Within the EU framework, ports along with other transport uh, stakeholders should strive in order uh, to promote a sustainable and competitive EU economy, 
to remove bottlenecks and improve coordination, to deploy interoper interoperable traffic management systems, invest in innovative technologies and transport systems, improve transport logistics, tra render transport services more efficient, and finally enhance intermodal connections. As it can be seen in uh, this graph, the dominant mode of uh, transport in EU is uh, track and the use of road. Almost half of the goods uh, are transported by road, while only short shipping can be considered uh, has a considerable share in uh, Europe's modal split and uh, can be considered as an important uh, substitute. Uh, short shipping accounts around, for around 75%. Uh, in European in the European continent. Apart from uh, Japan, which utilizes uh, road transport to an even greater extent uh, than uh, Europe, USA ha has a large share, share of rail transport, while also China and Russia utilize, on the one hand, rail and source shipping networks and rail and pipeline connections, respectively. So, in order to achieve increased uh, commodality within the EU, it's important that ports also will strive for a better modal split by undertaking and promoting certain actions. Then, uh, ports should strive for a better also should strive for a better modal split through the uh, the need for a better modal split exerts pressure on ports to transform from a maritime port to a competitive multimodal uh, service facility. Concerns about the negative impact of transportation requires ports to respond and communicate effectively by enhancing promoting intermodality options. While well, within Europe, maritime transportation may provide an alternative to hinterland transport. And road haulage in particular. Sources shipping in this context should be clearly integrated into port strategies, which are seeking to establish and strengthen multimodal and intermodal transport chains, combining maritime short sea shipping with overland and possibly hinterland connections. Within the EU framework, the Commission also stresses the need for a better modal slip. The Commission White Paper on uh, the Common Transport Policy on September 2001 stresses the development of intermodality as a practical and effective means to achieve a balanced transport system and proposes not only the development of motorways of the sea, high quality integrated intermodal maritime solutions, but also the more intensive use of rail and inland waterway uh, transport as key elements in the strategy. And it continues. In order to cope with its growth in road trade transport, short sea shipping rail and inland waterways must be used even more than today, and it is necessary to stimulate further powerful initiatives from the transport and logistics sector, for instance, the development of technical innovations to decrease road congestion. The short sea shipping potential, potential within the context of the European Union. Short sea shipping could be used as an alternative to road haulage. haulage. Short sea shipping is the waterborne transport of cargo and passengers by sea or inland waterways as part of the logistic transport chain in Europe and the regions connected to Europe. According to the Commission's definition, short sea shipping means maritime transportation between European ports or with adjacent third countries including a large, a large proportion of the Mediterranean, and hence, despite the implication of its name, short sea shipping in, is not restricted uh, in short distances. The main, the main aim in short sea promotion is to support a modal shift from the congested roads in Europe to sea. Short sea shipping should evolve in a sustainable transport link in door-to-door -door, uh, supply chains. Uh, short sea shipping can be compared several, has been compared several times to road transport, making estimations and comparisons of the two modes. According to literature,
Discussing short sea shipping as an alternative to road haulage. Short sea shipping has been uh, compared several times with road transport, uh, making estimation and comparison of uh, the two modes. According to the literature, the advantages of uh, short sea shipping mode versus uh, the road transport were identified mainly in uh, lower freight rates due to inherent economies of scale, better environmental impact due to a limited energy consumption, some advantages for truck drivers that are requested to drive less hours, increased safety level due to minor accidents while working, and finally benefits in terms of communications between some member states. However, uh, despite uh, the, the inherent advantages of social shipping over uh, road transport, the development of conventional social shipping up to now still leaves a sequence of inherent problems which limit the maritime solution as a strong competitive alternative to road transport in terms, in terms of delivery cost and time. A number of, obstac of, of obstacles still impede the further development of short sea shipping, amongst which we have firstly uh, the fact that many commercial players still view short sea shipping wrongly uh, as an old-fashioned mode of transport. Secondly, the full integration of short sea shipping into door-to-door -door modal change remains to be accomplished. The third fact that hinders uh, supply chain expansion is the complexity of documentary and administrative procedures in short sea shipping, uh, which is a fact that needs to be re-examined and tackled uh, immediately. Well, finally, the fourth reason uh, is that the efficiency of ports, port services and port hinterland interfaces and connections need to be enhanced. Moving to the MOSH initiative, uh, motorways of the sea, uh, as we also uh, said earlier, uh, strives to establish a trans-European network which concentrates flows of uh, freight on viable, regular and uh, reliable sea-based transport services in selected ports that are integrated in logistic chains and cover all types of maritime freight operations to reduce land transport congestion, increase use of more sustainable modes of transport, increase transport efficiency and effectiveness, while also improve accessibility to peripheral regions. The use of most projects consists in uh, connecting different corridors uh, and to provide shortcuts within the same corridors by connecting core ports, core ports with comprehensive ports, with a regional network of sea terminals that may be connected to these ports and with the various hinterland connections available uh, and to be developed. These actions actually will expand the reach of uh, the 10T core network corridors while closing uh, the gap between the efficiency and the cohesion of uh, European Union's transport system. Uh, motorways of the sea is at the forefront of intermodal transport, which implies high quality in terms of frequency, punctuality, efficiency of transport services, respect of the environment, exchange of information, speed of administrative and uh, custom procedures, efficiency of the equipment in ports and terminals, and accessibility to ports uh, to put uh, intermodal links with the internal, in, par in, the, in particular with the rest of uh, the, the trans-European network. Once again, we, this is a picture of uh, the uh, network. 
It is important to highlight the complementarity of uh, most to TNT by starting by stating that each TNT axis starts and ends uh, ends in a port, uh, uh, which is also in included in the most corridor. Most and TNT adopt a dual layer approach, as uh, we said earlier, uh, which is distinguished among a comprehensive network, a European wide transport network ensuring the accessibility to all regions, including the remote and peripheral areas, for which overall fulfillment should be complete by 2050, and the core network, which consists of the most important infrastructure interventions, as defined in the comprehensive network. It could be considered also as the backbone of multimodal mobility network in Europe. The new, more specifically, the new core network is comprised of nine corridors that will connect 94 main European ports, 38 key airports with rail connections in the major cities, 15,000 kilometers of railway. The most corridors and need to be connected to the core uh, to the core network in one of the following ways. The maritime link and its hidden connections within the core network between two or more core network ports, or the maritime link and its hidden connection between a core network port and ports of the comprehensive network, with a special focus on the hidden connections of the core and the comprehensive network of ports. Network ports. Now, as far as uh, the ports within MOS are concerned, they are considered as uh, the motorway of the sea interface with an appropriate infrastructure and superstructure through which cargo flows uh, seamlessly. General connections provide a fast door-to-door uh, -door cargo pickup pick up or delivery, while uh, state-of-the-art information technology systems are utilized. In such a way, the market winners in uh, the European continent and concerning uh, the ports will be engaging in uh, strategic collaboration and synergies with the transport stakeholders in the previous, in the upstream and the downstream linkages of uh, supply chain. Especially. Again, as far as ports within the most uh, network are, uh, most network are concerned, they are considered as a motorway of the sea interface with an appropriate infrastructure and superstructure uh, through which uh, cargo flows seamlessly. Internal connections provide a fast door-to-door -door cargo pickup or delivery. State-of-the-art information technology systems are utilized. And in such a way, the market uh, winners in the European continent will be those ports which will be capable of devising a strategy towards the change, engaging in strategic collaborations and synergies with uh, the other transport stakeholders from upstream and uh, uh, downstream stages of the supply chain, uh, the ports that will strive for the elimination of the bottlenecks and the constraints, while also the ones that promote uh, cargo consolidation along the trade routes they serve. Apart from these characteristics, so apart from these characteristics of the port, there are some additional parameters for successful motorway of the sea. Three conditions are distinguished, distinguished and are necessary for the for successful motorway of the sea. In order to obtain the necessary concentration of freight flows. Choices have to be made concerning port and intermodal corridors and services. The network needs to comprise ports which are efficient, lean, and agile. All players along the transport chain have to be committed to these projects. Involved uh, transport stakeholders uh, should be involved that are involved uh, should adopt a lean and agile approach. While finally, motorways of the sea need to feature the best value quality available quality through the chain in order to attract uh, attract new new users. Moving forward, uh, moving 
following an important aspect is to consider how the development of MOS will enhance and promote social shipping services. Social shipping services are supported by European sustainable mobility policies, provided that uh, there is a minimum frequency of, uh, three of three rotations per week, a maximum of three calls into ports, and uh, that services operate in one of the 10 corridors. The development of motorways of the sea allows, requires consolidation of freight along certain trade routes, thereby creating a critical mass required to sustain and develop social shipping viable services. The implementation of the MOS requires a uh, tra traditional bottlenecks which occur in, port in, in the port environment to be eliminated, thereby improving the efficiency and the effectiveness of uh, short sea shipping services. Here we have uh, uh, the motorways of the sea corridor. In uh, 2004, the uh, European Commission designed a large network of corridors for the promotion of uh, uh, maritime transport. Uh, more specifically, it uh, identified uh, four major corridors, the Baltic Sea Motorway, the Western European Motorway, uh, the Southeast, uh, the Southwest European Motorway, and the Southeast European Motorway. More analytically, uh, Motorway of the Baltic uh, Sea links Baltic Sea states with uh, member states in Central and Western Europe, including the route through North Sea and Baltic Sea Canal. Motorway of the Sea of Western Europe leading from Portugal and Spain via the Atlantic Gulf to the North Sea and the Irish Sea. Motorway of the Sea of Southeast Europe connecting the Adriatic uh, to the Ionian and the Eastern Mediterranean to include Cyprus. While finally, motorway of uh, the Sea of Southwest Europe, uh, Western Mediterranean era, which connects Spain, France, Italy, and includes Malta and links uh, with a motorway of the Sea of uh, Southeast Europe. Um, With regard to the European social shipping market and the post competition, uh, it must be stated that the operation of uh, the European social shipping system seems to be characterized by both co competition and cooperation. Uh, this type of um, competition, as it might say, uh, occurs in uh, as each sport seeks to attract and retain the largest number of shipping companies and users of maritime transport. Trade providers, countless logistics, etc. At the same time, however, specialization is limiting competition, going so far as to create niche markets, and is thus creating a certain complementarity between cities and ports, which are required to perform intensive exchanges of full or empty containers. Uh, these routes may, may be served also by short sea shipping networks. Moreover, airport traffic, whether it's associated with short sea or deep sea shipping, obviously depends on its hinterland. Competition means that each port seeks to extend its hinterland to the, to the detriment of the other ports in Europe. Actually, there are short distances between ports and uh, the hinterlands overlap considerably. The quality of overload, overland links with the interior is therefore the essential factor in the efficiency and competitiveness of the seaport. Consequently, uh, the overland corridors serving the ports are key components of uh, transport policies, whether they concern infrastructures, the quest for efficient and supplied and sustainable transport, or other factors. Here uh, we present uh, the TNT corridor network along with uh, uh, the motorways of the sea corridors. And once again, it must be stated that uh, motorways of the sea act complementarily to the TNT network as they provide the interface uh, uh, from the sea, deep sea voyage uh, to uh, provide the hinterland connection and connect peripheral and uh, other regions of Europe. Uh, together in order to increase uh, the cohesion and sustainability of the European transport system. Moving on to the description of uh, uh, the most corridors. Uh, the Baltic Sea, with regard to the Baltic Sea motorway, 
The Baltic Sea is almost the inner sea of the European Union. Therefore, it has a significant position in the process for special integration of the European Union. The main Uh, due to technical, some technical problems, we will have a 15-minute intermission and uh, we will continue in a while.